Salutation, everyone. Welcome to Total War Feral. I'm Lord Formant, and this is a quick guide on de interacting with the court mechanic. So there are two courts in the game, the Hittite and the Egyptian one. We're going to start with the Egyptian one, then we'll move to the Hittite one. So many of you know how to play with the court, but we're just going to go over a basic summary, and then we will get into what positions to aim for and how to do your best inside the court. So the court in this case is designed in a pyramid with the pharaoh um, or the equivalent Hittite high king at the top, followed by the various positions below it. Um, the big benefit is obviously being the ruler comes with a lot of benefits, but the higher up the pyramid you are, the more legitimacy the position is usually worth. Um, don't think that that legitimacy is super precious though. Um, the You'll get legitimacy other ways faster and for more than those positions give you. So you have various positions. Each position has various benefits. Um, some are better than others. Against each position, um, assuming you don't own one, if you own one, you can't really interact with things yourself. You'll gain uh, the benefit of the position. Um, the action will appear up here. In this case, if you were the vizier, you would have the action scheme. There'll be a button you could press here once a year. So what you can do is every turn you get a court action. Now, if you're playing someone like Ram Ramesses, uh, you get two. He's very strong at manipulating the court. But in this case, we are um, the Lady Egyptian and we only have one. Now, every character has different ways of interacting with the court. Some have uh, tricks um, where they can reverse things. Some can buy more turns. We're not going to get into that at the moment. Suffice to say that you can, against a position, you can perform Intrigue, which will give you Conspiracy. Um, if you want to get help on one of your plots, you can reveal it to another faction who may or may not help you. You can assist them, which pays a good chunk of gold. You'll get Regard. We'll go over Regard in a moment. Or you can Gossip. Out of all of these, I found Gossiping the most common one I did unless I was playing as the Viceroy of Kush, who has way too much gold. And then you can also request that the position help you. It does require a high amount of regard, 60 or so, and you can get the benefit of their position temporarily, some of which are better than others. And then the final action is to plot against. So you can threaten them, and in this case I have a 41% chance of succeeding, um, so we're slightly below the base chance. We can improve that each turn, um, but if we succeed, we become the new first commander. If we fail, um, we lose legitimacy. Ideally, you do not want to fail on any plot because usually legitimacy is the cost and you want as much as possible so you can become ruler. Now, discredit here is probably the one that's going to be used the most out of these plots, in my opinion. Uh, you will steal legitimacy from them. If you fail, you lose some legitimacy. This is the best way of building up legitimacy in the game, other than conquering sacred lands, really. Um, it's very powerful. You should pretty much every cycle of Shemsu Hor uh, try and do one discredit plot against somebody. The lower their legitimacy compared to yours, so, um, it, for example, if I was to char target the Pharaoh up here, the odds of me succeeding are zero. If I target the guy down here with 27, um, there we go. I have a slightly better chance. Not great. I have 35 legitimacy, so I am technically have more legitimacy than him. Doesn't make the world's difference, except if they're miles above you. In this case, targeting the Pharaoh is almost impossible, but I can target almost everyone else. Even these guys with 55, I have a 30% chance of success on. You also have the ability to blackmail them, which I find you succeed a fair amount of time on, and you will gain a ton of regard with them. Ugly enough, you will not cause them to hate you or go against you. Um, so it's a very good way of gaining uh, regard. If you've got free turns or your Ramesses, it's usually worth throwing down a blackmail plot to gain regard rather than relying on the less regard gained from gossip. Okay, so you might be saying we kind of understand how the court functions. What is the purpose of the court, though? The purpose of the court is a mini game, basically, within a game. Um, it's not the world's most complex mini game, but it at least is vaguely interesting. 
Uh, everybody in the court has the ability to plot, and the plots have their various outcomes, which we kind of went over with. The big purpose of this, though, is a legitimacy engine. It allows you to steal legitimacy from your opponents and add it to your own total while having to fend off your own legitimacy. Think of something almost like poker, where you've got a bunch of chips and you need to gain more while defending what you have or losing very little of it. Not a great analogy, but it's the closest I could come up with on short notice. Basically, you want to be stealing legitimacy for people, as well as checking periodically that there are no plots against you so that you don't lose your position and you do not lose your um, legitimacy. Now, the irony of the court system is if you are outside the court system, as in you do not hold a position in court, you're actually very safe and very hard to target. So if you're outside of the court, it may actually be to your benefit to stay outside the court and just build up your legitimacy there before striking in to take like the pharaoh position. But let's say you don't want to do that. Let's say you want to take a position in court. Where's the best way and what is the best position to take a position in court? Well, it, it takes time. Now, every Shemsu Hor, all plots are resolved. So if you start a plot and you power it up on like the first two turns of a cycle, you're not going to get the results till the end. Now, the thing at the end is if there are any empty court positions, you can claim them. Uh, it costs you a fee of, I think, gold, and you will take that position. So which position should you target? Well, it depends who you are and where you're playing. So let's start with one of the better ones down here, the Viceroy of Kush. This is the Egyptian position. You get 50 gold a turn. So if you are someone like Ramesses, or Ramesses really, out of the Egyptians, who has no easy access to gold, as in... He can't support any of the elite Egyptian units, and he won't have any gold to buy buildings for a long time. This is a good position for Ramesses, because it gets you gold. Now, if you're Sauret, or uh, the Viceroy of Kush, starting one, Amen Mese, he and she have easy access to gold. I think I'm on turn 12 in this game, and I'm getting 130 for a turn. Therefore, 50 more gold a turn, while nice, isn't the biggest benefit of this position. One of the bigger benefits is access to Kushite units anywhere. Kushite units are okay. They're not amazing. Once you're in position, you can hire Kushite mercenaries, which is really nice. Um, you can also reap profits from the mind if you request from them. If you take the position, you get kind of both of those benefits. This is a good entry position into the court if you don't have gold. If you do have gold, you want to pretty much ignore this position and look elsewhere. The first commander here gives access to special units, um, the elite warriors. Uh, they are in the special recruitment, which if you've played Total Warhammer is kind of like um, Regiments of Renown or something. Uh, you gain flanking maneuver, which is decent on your unit if you're uh, fighting battles yourself. This is a good position for you to hold. Lower unit costs. I haven't seen the biggest benefit of it because usually you're recruiting your units over multiple turns. But I suppose uh, if you were someone like uh, Seti, who could recruit a lot of units at once, could be a very good position. The legitimacy, again, is rather ignorable. In terms of requests, you can reduce costs or get elite warriors. Not the best position. Um, Seti is probably one of the best to take that position among the Egyptians. Um, everyone else kind of can skip it. You have the treasurer position, whereas if you, when you visit sacred lands, you will get some resources. It can be a good source of resources. You also get reduced building cloth costs, and you can do an embezzlement where you will steal resources. Um, it's a free use of it. It's quite nice. But again, it might not be the best position for you to take, especially if you're aiming to be pharaoh in a cycle. First commander and treasurer are more long-term positions, as in you're probably not going to be in the first round to become Pharaoh, the first civil war. You might be in the second, or you might even start the second. They're kind of a build-up position. The Viceroy of Kush is similar, but sometimes that gold early on can make the difference in a civil war. Moving up the tree, or the pyramid, we have the High Priest of Amun. Uh, the big benefit here is lower costs on shrines and temples, as well as if you visit Egyptian lands with temples, you get gold can be a good source of gold, especially if you have a lot of temples. 
Um, Sauret and Seti have a lot of access to those early on. Um, there's plenty of temples, and they can build plenty of them. Um, the lower cost is kind of nice for that purpose alone. And you get more favor with the deities. I have not found the favor with the deities game-changing, so you can kind of skip it. In terms of requests, you can make for them. You can get construction costs for temples. So if you're going to build a lot on your turn, by all means, request it from them. Uh, piety, you gain favor for a whole cycle. Now, that's another semi-build-up one. Um, it's a good way to develop your lands for a future play for Pharaoh. Now, the Vizier here, this might be one of the best positions if you're scheming for Pharaoh, which makes sense. The Vizier being the closest to the throne, usually historically in Egyptian society, you have the advantage of the action scheme. Now that you can only use this once a year, it'll appear over here. It's a button you can click and you will get three more court actions that turn. That is amazingly strong. That will allow you to gain plenty of uh, re regard with them through gossip or even assists and then start a plot and pretty much max it out in basically one turn. It's very good. You also can assassinate people. So um, you can try and kick the pharaoh off the throne. You can try and eliminate rivals. Sometimes characters are wounded instead of assassinated. That tends to be the named ones. Non... <laughs> I'm sorry. When I say named, I mean like the playable characters. Um, in my experience, that's how that works. If they're non-playable characters, sometimes you can kill them off. Um, wounding is pretty common, though. And in terms of request, you can request those actions from them. So if you're outside the court trying to get in, this is a good position to get regard with so you can get more court actions, so you can steal more legitimacy, or if you want to do assassinate. Now, an important point to realize, and I probably should have mentioned it earlier, if I start a... Oh, I can't start a plot this turn. Let me fix that. Okay, so now we've moved forward a turn. So we have... Act several turns until it's done. You cannot start a plot on Shemsu Hor or anything else. So if we were to start a plot, let's go against the first commander since we're likely to succeed there. So we start the plot. We have a 43% chance. We haven't revealed it to anybody. Now, we can't improve it this turn. We need regard. So we'll have to find a way to get regard with a faction. So um, that's all we can do on this turn. But if we were to try and start another plot, it will tell us you cannot do this because you already have an active plot of this type outside of the court action. So just be aware you're only going to really be able to do one discredit, one threaten, and one blackmail plot a single turn. Now, an important thing to realize is threatening. If you own a court position and you threaten for another one, you'll move to the new court position. Another thing to remember is you do not necessarily have to hold the court positions on your own. If there's a vacancy and you have a general, you can appoint your general to that position, gaining the benefits of that position for your faction in general, rather than just that specific general. And can I say general any more general amount of times? Um, suffice to say, it's worth trying to stock the court with as many positions as you can. The downside is the more you're in the court, the more often you'll have to defend against plots. And right now we don't have any plots against us because we're not in the court. Um, when we switch to the Hittite one, uh, I believe I have a plot against me going. And so you'll be able to see it there. So let's move forward a turn. Okay, so next turn. So we want to strengthen our plot because then only has a 47% chance of success. The way you do it is under the plot tab. There's an, a button here under mine. The problem is we do not have enough regard, so we need to gain some. So we could gossip, which would get us 20. The problem is we need 30 to improve it, and we only have a handful more turns. So we're going to assist, which gets us 120. Right costs us a huge chunk of gold, but that's just the way it goes. So next turn, we can improve our plot, and then the turn after, we can improve it as well. Okay, we're back in the court. So, let's improve this. So, it'll take away 30 of our regard, and now our chance is How 76. Pleasant conversations are few and far between at court. Yes, they're chatty. Um, so the next turn, what we'll do again is improve it, and then we'll have a chance to succeed. And that's how you do a discredit one. On success, we'll steal three legitimacy, which will add to our total. If we fail, we're going to lose legitimacy for every faction we revealed the plot to. 
Um, I don't tend to reveal to other factions if I can avoid it. There's very, very little reason I find to do so. Sometimes you can improve it. Sometimes you, you need to improve regard with them. It doesn't seem to make the biggest difference. Uh, if you want to play around with it, you can. Um, but it's usually safer to go at your own, especially if you don't want to risk losing legitimacy. And, of course, at the top of the pyramid is the Pharaoh. So it's impossible to really become Pharaoh um, without tons of violence. Um, <laughs> while you can plot against them, you cannot threaten them. Uh, meaning you cannot become pharaoh without a civil war when the civil war kicks off that's a whole new mechanic but if you succeed and you have enough legitimacy this is why you have to play the court game even if you can win through war is because you need a ton of legitimacy to use the powers they scale up you can read about how they scale up it tells you this is where the pharaoh's powers are located not necessarily in the main court one on the other hand Oh, sorry, he's got to talk for a moment. Uh, the benefits of being Pharaoh, you get elite units. It's very hard for people to scheme against you. Um, however, it does cost you um, more stuff against them. But you can get benefits um, from plotting with them. Um, if you can enlist them and gain regard, you can basically succeed on several plots a cycle. So if you've got spare gold... Um, Assisting and then using make request will really help improve your chances of success. Otherwise, you can go the low cost way where you perform intrigue, you gossip, or you assist, you build up your plot, blackmail, discredit. By and large, discredit is how you're going to gain legitimacy, threaten is take over position, blackmail is gain regard. And that's a pretty quick court summary for the Egyptian ones. So, by and large, if you're outside the court, you're relatively safe. Once you get in the court, things get a little treacherous. The divine court bids you welcome. So, uh, talkable AI. Um, one thing to realize is you may not know a plot is coming against you. A way to reveal plots against you is to gossip. It re reveal plots they have started or a single one. Sometimes you will get an event, either give up your court action for gold, stop and... In, um, uh, plot against somebody for gold and favor or give up your court action for the turn to know all plots if you get the all plots ones that's usually worth taking unless you desperately need that court action um, giving up a plot against people is usually worth it otherwise you lose regard and you can just restart the plot with more regard the next turn um, give you a court action for gold really only useful if you don't have a source of gold on your own i think that's the majority of events in a court if you're outside the court you're relatively safe but the benefits of being in court is like gold extra actions or ruling if you're ruling you're as pharaoh you're always going to be in the court now let's jump over to the hittites okay here we are in the hittite court so currently i am the high king uh, i started the campaign as this guy and i have yet to lose the position so i gain access to the elite unit so if we find my oops I don't know where my general is at the moment. Um, where is he? Ah, here he is. If we were to click on him and recruit, there's the special recruit. So we've got the elite ones. Um, I think we've already got the veteran swordsman or something. I oh, know we've maxed out our stuff. Be aware they do cost gold to maintain, but that's where they would appear. Um, also, if you have vassals, that's where they are as well. Not that that's part of this video. So in the court, he's talking to him. Even me, the great king. Okay, so uh, since we're in court, as you can see, I've been doing plots this turn. Plenty of discredits, undermines. We've stopped the discredit and we've restarted it. So we're just constantly decrediting, uh, dec focusing on people to discredit. So let's run over the positions here because they are slightly different than the Egyptian ones. Let's start from the bottom right. So Chief of Royal Bodyguards has the ability to remove any plot. Uh, through the intrigue cease um, really good everyone else has to pay resources to stop plots and um, you have stronger bodyguards nice to make your generals more powerful you also have hold the flank so your armies will stand and fight better um, it's a very nice position if you're outside the court the downside to the hittite court is there's really only two characters to play for it hopefully they'll add more then we've got the I don't even know what you want to call this, the Tukanti position. 
Again, this is similar to the Vizier. You get additional court actions and you can plot to assassinate. It's a very good position if you're building up to become Great King. You have the High Commander, very similar to the Egyptian First Commander, elite units, flanking maneuvers, lower costs every cycle. Um, good if you want to focus on building up a military and have a way to recruit a lot of units. Otherwise, by and large, not worth worrying about. The High Judge, you can preside over cases for rewards, which is nice if you get cases. Um, I was them for several turns in one of my playthroughs, and I never really got any significant amount of cases. Um, but the rewards are nice. You can visit Sacred Hittite Lands to modify happiness. You can put it up. You can put it down. By and large, you want to put it up. Uh, you can disband a rebellion, which is nice, especially if you're playing as uh, this guy, uh, because he tends to have revolts and unhappiness. Putting it down can allow you to run a country, uh, region, sorry, province, um, add unhappiness, and then stop the revolt. By and large, though, you shouldn't have problems with the rebellions unless you're not playing right. Then you have the Lawgiver, which is, again, very similar to the Treasurer of the Egyptians. You have the Embezzle Plot. You can visit Sacred Lands to gain resources and lower building costs. So out of this, if you want to become Great King and you want to do it quickly, this is the position you want to target for the additional scheming, which will allow you to steal more legitimacy and do it faster. By and large, you'll control the court. Um, obviously, becoming Great King or starting as it is great. Outside of that, the Chief of Royal Bodyguards, in my opinion, is probably better than the High Commander, unless you can afford the Elite Units. If you've got Source of Gold and Copper, the Elite Units are nice. Otherwise, Chief of Royal Bodyguards, Lawgiver, by and large, unless you're going to embezzle a lot, pretty much ignore it. The resources do not outweigh the benefits of the position, or the downsides of the other, not having the other positions in court. The High Judge is good. If you get cases, it's nice. But by and large, you shouldn't be needing to get rid of rebellions, which means you don't need to modify happiness, which negates a lot of the power of this position. However, if you can claim positions and put your various uh, people into it, like I've done here, you gain the benefit of this position and no one else has it. Now, it doesn't fully supplement your legitimacy, but it is nice to have. Um, if we were to look at court plots, I've gained 18 legitimacy from the start of the game just from plotting alone. So it's a pretty major source of legitimacy as the game goes on. I still have yet to get enough to even access tier 1 powers, but it's a good start. Anyway, that's pretty much how to run the court system. Hopefully this helps you guys learn how to play it. It's a quite interesting little mini game. It doesn't change the game, but the legitimacy you get from it cannot be overlooked you do need that legitimacy anyway thank you guys all for watching hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully it helped you if it did like subscribe comment whatever and i'll see you guys all in another video bye for now